Okay. Hi, this is Rick. I'm here with Glenn Block from Microsoft. He's a program manager uh, and does the MEF team. Uh, he's on the MEF team and they do MEF dealing, so that's what they do. So we're just going to chat about general.net stuff and we're probably going to be all over the board with topics, but uh, it might be informative, might not be. So here we go. Where are we though? Well, we uh, are show in people. Red Rock Canyon in Las Vegas. But yeah, we we're talking about Prism and how uh, you can use Prism and MEF together, and, and they're not—they're entirely different products, but they—they they can be melded together for a great uh, inversion of control and extensibility and loosely coupled apps. So why don't you go on with that? Um, so actually, I mean, Prism is uh, Prism is more of an end-to-end -end story around building composite applications, specific types of composite applications, composite UI apps. Yeah, and MEF actually enhances that by loosely coupling things, right? Well, Prism uh -huh. uses loosely, loose coupling as well. I think the major difference is that whereas Prism is more kind of this end-to-end -end guidance that comes out of PMP that has a very broad set of goals and it kind of touches on each part of it, MEF is this very specific technology for addressing component decoupling. Yeah. which is a big part of uh, what underlies building composite apps. Um, and so, you know, they definitely, there's definitely overlap, but I'd say the one big difference is that Prism, where, you know, whereas Prism is kind of this end-to-end -end set of guidance with some library pieces, MEF is more of a core part of the .NET framework, and it's not designed for UI. You can use it anywhere. You can use it in web services. You can use it you know, any place where you have components that need to get decoupled. The other big difference about MEF is that we were particularly focused on this third-party extensibility story. And what that means is, you know, plugins, add-ins, add -ins, plugins, and that really wasn't a goal for Prism. You know, Prism's goal was more about, you could almost say these really broad add-ins, which you can call modules, yeah. but where they're not really coming from third parties. They're, you or know, internal. within my company, different teams contributing. Yep. Whereas MEF is really about kind of an ecosystem. Like if you think about our core MEF customers, Visual Studio, right? Yeah. And Visual Studio's new extensibility model for its editor is using MEF. So there it's like the, the Visual Studio doesn't know about the thousands of ISVs that might put something in. And yeah. so MEF is particularly focused on this thing we call discoverability. Yes. The ability to go out there and just look at the universe of things that are available and make some sense out of them. Yeah, and, and it wires it up for you. Let's talk. And, and you know, like I had talks with um, Harry Pearson about this recently because, you know, there's a whole gray area about is MEF an IOC versus not. And, you know, I think what we've tried to be very clear on is, you know, MEF uses inversion of control absolutely. But when you dig into the way it does what it does, um, if you come from a context of a, of a traditional IOC, it's a very different experience. You might say, why do I have things like metadata and all this crap? It's yeah. because of that specific, very loosely coupled, discoverable nature yes. that we were focused on. But Harry exactly. Pearson and I were having this debate over Twitter, and he was using Autofact, which actually one of the members of my team previous members of my team authored, which is an awesome IOC. And it lets you really easily just write one line of code to say like, register this as this in yeah. a nice fluent interface. I love it, it's beautiful. And he was yeah. like, well, that's perfect for me. Why would I use MEF? MEF will be overkill for my needs. And we were kind of debating back and forth, but I actually think he had a good point. And I've heard this from many customers. You know, if I've got a small app and everything's in my control, I actually like being able to simply just go to one place and specify here's the policy for my app. Because I'm not worried about the third-party cases. But you can still do that with MEF. Well, mean, tomato, tomato again. No, no, you can, but today it requires you, you know, it's a question of, quote, build versus buy. If I go with Autofact, I get an API out of the box yeah. that is there ready for me. Sure, sure. In MEF, I have to build it, which MEF yes. Contrib is going to do. And then that raises a different question, too, because when I use Autofact, I'm agreeing to use an open source product. There's a whole bunch of customers as that will come as to MEF as part of the framework that don't want yeah. to go near open source. And Be they're going to say... Because they're trying to publish a commercial product. And, and they're going to say... Exactly. And they're going to say, just because you gave me the seeds to do it, thank you very much, but I don't want to now have to spend six months or, or you know, three months or whatever it is to build my own thing. I want you to provide it to me. For those of you who don't do IOC, like me, I, I don't get into it that much. Uh, doing more of an old school style of programming. Uh, MEF to me is like a plumber uh, without the butt crack. 
And, and <laughs> nice. Sorry, I had to go there. That's better than the uh, drug uh, uh, Matt's like a pro, uh, plumber. He wires everything up for you. I mean, you say, I, I got this this part, this part, this part, this part, this part, and the main app says, I, but he shows I want no this part, crack. and I want this part, and I want this I part. I think some people think the attributes are the butt crack. <laughs> the attributes are the butt crack. And then and, and it just wires it up for you. I think it's just it's, it's a it's a plumber or electrician, so to speak. And yeah, the only thing that's sometimes a little bit scary is, like, it depends on do you trust the plumber or not. Do you yeah, trust because that the plumber the does? Domain, you could have, uh, you know, well, it's just a question. Like, do you know what right. job the plumber is doing, right? Like, there's one angle of a person who says, you know what? I don't care. I pay the guy the money. He gets things working. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, I know sometimes a guy named Pony who takes care of it for but me. But sometimes right? plumbers screw up, right? Yeah. And then, and then, yeah. And you so, got a flood. So the nice thing I think about having the central file is actually that. When I'm building a small system, I know that the only things it's going to find are the things that are defined right here. So if I have a yeah. question, I just go to that one place. Now, if I'm using convention, that may not be enough. Because if I'm using convention, it might say, oh, here's the five conventions that it looks for. So now I have to go look through all the things I'm expecting it to find and say, does it implement the convention or not? So, you know, it's kind of half a dozen, you know, six of one, half a dozen of another. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, and, you know, like when, when you talk about even things like composite UI, as I said, we've done, MEF is a really great technology for decoupling components, and when you're building decoupled UIs, they're just components that happen to be UI components. Yes. But same. there's a set of specific things, I think, that Prism brings to the table that are really nice, places where MEF has not gone yet, and some of them MEF may go to, some of them may not. Um, you know, Prism has been able but to say... don't you say, run a risk of going being parallel with Prism and having some overlap there then? Well, so right now, I mean, Prism was designed in a way that it works on top of like an IOC type yeah. mechanism. And you can replace that with anything. So one simple way, and some customers have done this today, that you could get MEF working with Prism is just to replace that thing and say the thing, instead of it being Unity, it's MEF. Yes. But you could actually go further because MEF has, Prism has like a module loading service. Because, and this is because most IOC containers weren't really focused on this. They were, they were, they were not really focused on kind of this discoverability aspect. So, but, but Prism does some discoverability because it looks for anything that it implements iModule and it loads it up. Yeah. Those kind of things are really easy to do with MEF. So it's like beyond just the simple provider of services, there are other places where MEF fits very well, and that's why we're working with PMP to try to get a yeah. consolidated story. So I think in the ulti ultimately where we end up, it won't be about overlap. Um, the, there'll be places where today... More of a complement than an overlap. Yes, there'll be, I'd be more of a layering. I think today there's a layering where you have an IOC container that sits here and kind of Prism sits on top of it. Yeah. And I think what's going to happen as a result of Prism 4 is the core infrastructure pieces coming from the platform will be higher up the stack and then Prism will still be there to fill the gaps. Well, what kind of gaps might it fill? Well, one of the cool things that Prism ships is a pub sub mechanism called Event Aggregator which is a messaging, loosely coupled messaging. Push pull type of thing? It's a pub sub, push, oh, publish, push publish, subscribe, right? Yeah, so push pull, basically. I send a message, and I don't know who the person who's receiving it on the other end is, and I can have many Can it be multiple consumers. recipients? Yes. yes. Be anyone that subscribes to that. It's and, kind of like and, add, and so, adding a handler type of thing. Well, but the, di the difference is that when you use traditional events, the subscriber has to know who the publisher is. Yeah, this is loose. So pub sub splits that out, and basically allows you to say, okay, I'm a publisher, I'm publishing something that I think people might be interested in. So is it more like an RSS feed type of thing? Kind of, it is. But it's yeah. not using, obviously, Adam or anything. Exactly, exactly. Because it's because it's because it's all within the same process. We call, it, we call it contract assemblies, yes. It's in yeah. my MSDN article. If you read, and, and by the way, if any of you guys are interested in MEF, I recently did an article in uh, last month's MSDN magazine. So if you go to MSDN magazine and you look at the I guess it's the February issue. You'll see that there's a, an article on building composable applications. Yeah, I hear that's the issue where they have the fold out of Bill Gates and a, you put on the wall. Yeah, no, no, that wasn't. You have, that. Next to you, have anyway. not. Yeah, it's, it's loopy up here in the mountain. <laughs> We're what not thinking we straight. We're probably much high higher altitude. than high altitude. We're yeah. blaming it on that. So, <laughs> <laughs> all this meth we're doing is, uh, yeah, it's in the trouble.